I mean, you can always Google best Spanish Netflix shows and then a list will come up that will tell you the premise of the show, what genre it is, and that you should definitely go watch it. But I want to offer you something a little more fun, a little more personalized. I'm going to recommend these shows and I'm going to tell you what I absolutely love about these shows, but also roasting them at the same time. I just think it'll give you a better picture if you want to go check it out or not. Hola, my name is Emmy. If you're new, welcome. Go check around this little channel, see if you like it, and it would be awesome if you could stick around. I obviously haven't watched every single Netflix show that's on Netflix, but I have watched quite a few in the past six or seven months. I think I've watched enough to be able to recommend some. So in this video, I'm going to give you eight shows that I really recommend. Then I'm going to give you two shows that are really popular and I think that you will enjoy if that's your jam. And then finally, I'm going to give you three shows that I will definitely 100% watch if I had access to it. But if you live in a different country, then you might have access to it. So I'm going to start with my absolutely favorite show. And I think this is a great example because it's my favorite show. Show, so I love it. I love it with all my heart, but I have so many things that I can roast about it So we're gonna talk about Las Chicas del Cable. Las Chicas del Cable is about four women that live in Madrid in the 1920s And they work at a telephone company. If I had to describe the show in just a couple of words It would be the 1920s feminism suspense and romance What I love about the show is that all the characters are so well established It's amazing that there's not a single character that you like don't care about. I've watched season one twice It's absolutely brilliant, but I must inform you that the last season is a disaster. <laughs> it is the most dissatisfying ending you'll ever see. I was in shock after it ended. I think I went through like all the stages of loss, denial, anger, depression, whatever. <laughs> but still, the reason why I was so intensely mad was because it was such a good show and they just kind of wrecked it at the end. But still, it's a great show, especially season one. This show had my heart. I couldn't stop watching it. Okay, the next show I want to talk about is La Casa de las Flores. This is a Mexican show. So basically, we have the Kardashians of Mexico. The family is falling apart with all these crises happening and they're trying to maintain their perfect front. This show is awesome. It's hilarious and it's criticizing society all the time and I love that. Best character is the mom and Paulina. The worst character is Elena. She is dumb and boring which is a combination that cannot be forgiven. I watched season one. Season two is horrible. I just could not get through it. Everything that happens is just so random and pointless and boring? And I think one of the reasons is because they took out the mother, which is the best character. But apparently season three is supposed to be really good. The third show that I want to talk about is Club de Cuervos. Okay, so Club de Cuervos is about a soccer team in Mexico. The owner dies at the beginning and the son and daughter fight over the presidency. And the brother becomes a president because he's a man. But the problem is that he is entirely incapable. He's dumb, he's narcissistic, he's kind of mean. On the other hand, the sister has a capacity, but she's neurotic. She gets pissed off really easily. She can sometimes be really mean, so we don't like her. It's very hard to like this woman. <laughs> Conclusion, both are unlikable, but the dynamic is hilarious. And all the side characters are really good. You don't need to like the main characters to be able to like this show. But the best character, Hugo Santos. Period. I've only watched season one, but I'll definitely watch season two and beyond. I should mention that this show taught me more Mexican swear words than I would have ever liked to know. I know so many ways to offend you in Mexican Spanish right now. <laughs> but the next show I want to talk about is Control Z. So I started watching the show yesterday. I finished it at... 3 a.m. this morning. I mean, this is bad. It's just one season. It's eight episodes, and each episode is like 35 minutes. So it's not too bad, but I was like, dude, I have stuff to do. What am I doing? But at least I can talk about it in this video. That show is addicting. It's really good. Our setting is a high school in Mexico. There is a hacker that has all the secrets of every single person in the school, and then he's starting to leak it all. So we got a gossip girl situation going on. And so the main character, Sofia, is trying to figure out who the hacker is, and that's the main plot line. I love this show. There's just so much drama, so many twists and turns. It's not too long. Eight episodes is perfect. It's nice and short. We got a clear direction. So I don't really have anything to roast about this show. The one thing I'll say is that they left us with a huge cliffhanger at the end. And if they dare choose the path that is like the bad one, I will be so upset. I can't wait until season two is out. The fifth show I want to talk about is Velvet. Velvet is the 50s in Madrid. It's about a fashion company. And it's centered around the romance of the son of the owner and this employee girl who is poor. So what's really good about these period dramas as a Spanish learner is that they don't really deconstruct the language. Like they don't use a lot of slang. It's way more standard Spanish. So Las Chicas del Cable is like that, Velvet is like that, and a show called Altamar is also like that. Personally, I don't like this show. I've only watched two episodes. Two and a half, two and a half. So this show is a soap opera. There's nothing wrong about a soap opera, but it's too much of a soap opera. Just in the first two episodes, like the melodramatic 
fantasy? Let, let me explain. I'm gonna spoil the first two episodes for you guys. If you don't want to hear it, skip to this point. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. So, just in the two episodes, we've got a car crash. We've got the death of a father of a main character. We've got not one, but two attempted elopements. We've got a proposal and an engagement, which is only to be broken in just a few days because out of a heroic act of self-sacrifice, the girl runs away so the guy can marry this other girl. This is all in two episodes. And what's worse is that the two main characters are Romeo and Juliet are boring as hell. The side characters are interesting, but the two main characters, they are so boring. But having said that, I know that a lot of people love this series and the fashion is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And I genuinely think this series is good for learning Spanish. Okay, let's do another Spanish series. Um, I'm gonna talk about Paquita Salas. Now, Paquita Salas is a comedy show. It's about a talent agency. They used to be popular in the past, but then now they're not doing so well. It's really funny. It gives me like the office vibes. Like, you know how the camera zooms in like, like that and how like they would have what do you call those like the interviews they're just kind of like talking to the camera what's happening what they're gonna do now you know what i'm talking about but the thing is the spanish level is kind of high for my level and people from spain especially from madrid they talk so fast it's crazy and all the humor is based on what they say so if you don't understand what they're saying then it's not funny so i had to keep on stopping and looking up words or like just kind of like stop read try to understand what it's saying and then go again so it kind of took me forever to get through so i've only watched maybe like four episodes out of only five episodes, by the way. It's a really short series and that's good. I didn't even finish the season because I was like, I'll come back when my Spanish is better. <laughs> but I think if you're at a higher Spanish level or if you're doing Spain Spanish, then I think the series is really good for you. Sticking to the Spain trend, I'm gonna talk about La Casa de Papel. This was the only Spanish series that I've heard of it way before I was even interested in Spanish. So like, it's so damn famous. Everybody should watch this series. It is so, good it's so entertaining i feel like by this point people know the premise of the show it's a heist it's a money heist i've actually just recently started watching it i'm still on like episode like nine ten or something like that i haven't even finished the first season if any of you dare spoil anything in the comments i will I will come for you. What's great about this show is that it's very visual. I think I only understand like 70-80% of what's happening, but it's fine. Yeah. When a show is this famous, when it's not an English show, you have to know that it's really good. <laughs> Don't even question it. Go watch it right now. <laughs> um, the best character is Nairobi. Dembet is also a favorite, and I don't like Tokyo. And the last series I want to talk about in this category is a show called Made in Mexico. So this is a reality show. It's about really rich people in Mexico and about their little circle of rich humans. And I'm normally a person who does not watch reality shows at all but there's a very specific state of mind that you can be in sometimes where you're willing to watch something in Spanish and learn a couple of vocabs but you don't have the mental capacity to get into the story too much to worry about these characters so you know when you're just like mentally tired to watch something so intense like La Casa de Papel this show is for that exact gray zone so it's a great show that's like kind of entertaining and like I could watch it but I truly don't care and again if you're doing Mexican Spanish then this is great it's real people it's real Mexicans talking in Spanish so again, you can pick up a lot of words. Okay, so next I quickly want to talk about two shows that I haven't really watched But I think for some people it might be a great show. One is Elite. I've watched two or three episodes of Elite I think it's interesting, especially if you like those like heavy drama high school show type of stuff But again, they talk so fast and every single sentence is full of slang words Which I think is good for a person who's learning Spain Spanish But what I'm saying is I'm not even doing Spain Spanish. So for me personally, I was like this is just discouraging I don't have the motivation to even learn these slings. So that's why I don't watch it, but it is so popular. And the other show I want to talk about is Narcos, which is about the drug lord. And the reason why I'm not going to be watching this is because I don't like violence. Like, I <laughs> I don't like that mafia type of stuff. I don't like the gory, like, bloody shows. Like, it's so violent. Oh my god. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I know that that's very just me. And I know that the show is super famous and that a lot of people like it. So I think that if you like those mafia type of stuff, then you would definitely like this series. So yeah. And the last category are the shows that I I would definitely watch, but I just don't have access to it. And there's three shows. The first one is Luis Miguel La Serie. I've complained about it once in a video. It is a Netflix original, but they just don't have the first season on Japanese Netflix, and I am devastated. And don't tell me about the VPN thing, okay? I know what a VPN is, but I'm just too cheap to pay for one. <laughs> so Luis Miguel is a super famous Mexican singer. He has a beautiful voice. But what's more interesting about him is that he's had a very dramatic life. He started off as like a teen idol 
idol and he has this amazing career but like he's had a lot of different women he's had like so many different rumors and he was a pretty private guy but now he came out with this series that's based on his own life and the show seems super interesting the next series is called Gran Hotel it's about this guy who's like looking for his sister and he goes into this hotel and then he works at the hotel and then he falls in love with like the owner's daughter or something so it's this again this like class difference romance type of thing it's supposed to be really good and again it's like a time period thing I'm not sure when but it's like in the past somewhere the last series I want to talk about is Betty La Fea the original series is from like the 90s? 80s? Like old, like a long time ago. And it's from Colombia. It's about a girl, Betty, who's very ugly. And I think it's how she goes through this transformation that she like gains more confidence and it's like nice to see that. And it's really famous. There are so many adaptations of it. There's a one on Netflix called Betty in New York. I didn't like it that much, but apparently the original one is really good. And I really have no idea where you can stream it, but if you can find it, then I, I think that would be a great show to watch. And now we come to the end of the video. If there's a show that I haven't mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And and also, in this video, I've given a lot of unasked opinions. Be nice, be funny. But if you have different opinions of whether you love or hate the show that I mentioned, then let me know. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good day or night, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!